Inside. I'm Daphne Brogdon. You are in for a treat. This is 24 Inside brought to you by Allstate. You're in good hands. And you are in very good hands if you've just seen the episode of 24, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. If you haven't, stop watching right now. But for those of us who have, oh my God, how good was that? Yeah. What did you think? When he said, I, I'm going to call the only person I can trust. We're like, okay, who's it going to be? Is it going to be the defense secretary? Like, did you guys have different guesses about who it was going to be? Yeah. Did anybody guess Tony? Yeah. Oh, you were way, I'm like, ah! screaming like it was 1963 and the Beatles came on or something <laughs> anyway so that's a one great storyline but of course in 24 there's a lot of very compelling storylines one of the best of the season I think you guys will agree is that of that terrorist cell family hmm, not exactly Desi and Lucy living next door there no <laughs> name is similar it's all res and then probably one of the most interesting ones is the matriarch of that family who's played by a beautiful actress that we've seen in House of Sand and Fog, which she was nominated for an Academy Award. Very happy to welcome Shorey Adushlu. Adushlu. Please welcome co-producer Peter Linkov. All right, now your voice is so fabulous, you could read the phone book. And By all means, I'll do it for you. Yes. <laughs> How about your outgoing, outgoing message? <laughs> yeah, 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 the outgoing message. I would love Definitely. that. What do you say, Peter? I said get her a phone book. Yeah, right. I want to hear it. The, you could be the, you know, the way, what's his name? The, uh, that actor with the, the deep voice does all the phone commercials now. You could do it. But, uh, yeah, James Earl Jones. All right, so I'm going to, we have some questions from the audience because they have just seen the episode, like oh. the rest of us. Um, and this is uh, from Karen and Pat, Karen Gager, Pat Bryant. All right. They want to know, does the division at CTU normally hire high security employees from Terrace R. Ush? I was wondering about that. <laughs> the Aisha Tyler, yeah, the Aisha Tyler character, she is like, I'm like, how did they get in? How did she get in? How did she get in? Well... First of all, do we hire them from Terrace R Us? They're cheaper by the dozen. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess you get the 13th free, so yes. Um, how did she get in? She's smart. You'll see how she got in. Well, I guess, you know, when you're planning the new season, of course, you have to think there's got to be one bad apple in CTU. Yeah. And you don't necessarily want to make it one of the beloved characters, so you've got to bring in a new one, right? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And then, of course, there's, there's been a lot of talk. You, you, you want to have, uh, you're having terrorists in this episode, as you often do. They aren't red-headed Irish people, we're noticing, you know. <laughs> so, was, there, was that calculated, like, hmm, what's going on in the trends in the news? Let's do the Middle Eastern thing. Um, no, I think what we wanted to do was we just wanted to be realistic. We uh, wanted to portray um, a situation that's going on, and I, I think we felt, and it, it just so happens to... Uh, seem like it's ripped from the headlines, but I think we just really wanted to tell a really good story, and yeah. we found it to be a very realistic way to tell the story. Now, um, Sheree, we have an email from Colleen Dunn, and she said that she read somewhere that you were initially offered the role of Dina, but you hesitated. What, what changed your mind? The reason was because they could not give me a screenplay to read. Oh. They said, it's, um, we cannot give it to you. We are going to send it home a few days prior to the shooting. And I said, I'm sorry, I cannot get myself involved in a project that I have no idea of. of it's past my age. I'm not a young girl. I cannot <laughs> go around and say, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was getting myself involved with. <laughs> Impossible. So I said, no, thank you. In two weeks, our producers were more than kind enough to have me and to tell me uh, the story and about this woman. And right there and then I realized that uh, I am dealing with a complex character with many faces, which gives me a lot of chance to portray each and every one of them as thoroughly as possible. Yeah, I mean, because you know, she's so hard on her son in the beginning when he won't do away with poor little Debbie. I mean, poor Debbie. Don't we feel sorry for her? I know. The tea lady. I know. And I know in the way. You know, the tea. Don't offer the me tea. tea. Um, and then, but she, now she's really rallied and she's trying to save him. What, what do you think the switch there is for Dina? It's the mother who's, um, after all, after being a terrorist, believing in your cause, after all, at the end of the day, the maternal figure comes out. Mm -hmm. It's a mother who's torn between her cause, her belief, and her son. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. and we are going to see many faces, more faces. Peter, did the did the the role of Dina change once Shoray was was cast for it? Has she influenced how it went? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. She's brought so much to the role. I, I uh, we were talking beforehand. He said you could write this stuff, and you 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 have an idea of who the character is, but what she brought to the table is incredible. Yeah. I mean, people come up to me on the street saying that she's they're afraid of her. And people are coming up to her and saying they're afraid of her. I'm afraid, afraid of her. I'm because, afraid of her. You because you're attracted to her. You, I'd take the tea from her too. You know, she's, oh, she's so great. warm she's and gracious. So nice. And then you're like, ah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Andre Colbert from Brooklyn. She has a question for you, Sheree. She said, um, she, was it hard for you personally, culturally, to take on the role of being part of a terrorist family? We say you're from Iran. Right? It was indeed, absolutely. Yeah. I was born and raised in Iran until the age of 25. And I have been an activist for the past 25 years that I've been outside Iran, living abroad. And obviously it was a very, very difficult decision to make. Because uh, not only being an actress whom Iranian people loved and called me my beloved actress, but also the uh, political activities that I had in the past made me think that if I take a negative role, mm -hmm. uh, the role of an evil, might, unfortunately, might, it might uh, make people believe that uh, I am not the one whom they can trust right. as their, uh, as an activist, as, as an, uh, you know, a, an actress that they like and they can trust. But at the end, I realized that those who have been exposed to the Western culture are familiar with films and uh, TV series would be able to tell the difference between drama and real life, between fiction and everyday life. Well, it has that kind of James Bond element to it, whereas James Bond, whatever sort of villain in the news of that week is usually, or that year, is part of the film. So exactly. You, yeah. And James Bond was based on the Cold War. That's right. Very true. Um, I guess going along that, and just uh, there's a question from Megan Boo in Colorado. So she says, uh, as a person of Middle Eastern descent, do you feel 24 portrays the Middle East in an unfavorable light? No, because first of all, um, we have to make it to clarify this, that 24 is a great, unique TV drama. Mm -hmm. It's purely fictional. Its characters are purely fictional. Some people tell me, how do you feel like being a stereotype? And I keep telling them that there is no such type that I could be the stereo right. of it. I have created this woman from scratch. Although I've got to say, my ex-fiance's mom, she was a little <laughs> hard on me, but not that bad. Didn't roll me in carpet. Um, okay, uh, Peter, a question for you from an email, Katzma85. She, uh, whoever Katzma, he, she says, I remember your writing from La Femme Nikita. Did you used to write for them? Yeah. And especially That's the fun. character Madeline. And you wrote Driscoll as strong this season. Do you find it easier to write women more than men. Well, we're going we're gonna to fix the grammar on that later, but I think I understand. <laughs> Let me that. fix that. I'm actually... Yeah, right. <laughs> since I'm a writer. Um, is it easier to write women? I, uh, you know, it was easier to write Alberta. Alberta Watson is such a good actress. I think it was just easier to write her. I, um, men and women, I, I, it's, it, writing is difficult. It really is difficult. But when you have a good actress or an actor that's going to read the lines, I think it makes it look like it's easy. Well, that's a, that's a good uh, uh, character because it's the, it's the conflict between working woman, working mom, taken to the nth degree, you know. Oh, Nuclear absolutely. holocaust and uh, daughter might be dying in the emergency room next door to your office. It's tough. Um, okay, Sheree, an email question here from Tamara Diaz, all the way from Spain. Thanks for giving wow. us such a great Spain. character. Do you feel powerful when you are playing Dina's evil side? I'm afraid I have to say yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a very bad feeling. I never thought I could feel that way, but and since this is the first evil character that I'm playing, always I've been playing nice people. This yeah. is the first time. And uh, I don't judge my characters, because if I do so, I won't be able to portray them. And I've always criticized actors who already had made up their mind that this character is bad, therefore when they start, they act bad. You, know, you come here, and they're trying to turn into an evil. But um, the truth of the matter is that it's, uh, when I started playing here, I realized how powerful being bad is, and that, that really scared me. Well, then also as an actor, <laughs> you do have to try, you do have to find the, the truth in that role, and as with the, the terrorist family, you, you have to kind of do a backstory, probably like, okay, well, me and my husband were disillusioned, I mean, so this is how we I came to this point. That. I always do that. I always do a backstory. Yeah. I would sit down and write a story. Uh, imagine she was born you know, at such and such 
place. She was she went to this and this university, and uh, she got married at this age, and she uh, was probably right. born in a very religious family, and then therefore married to a very religious uh, uh, man. And also, what I do, I go through magazines, and I oh. try to find her dress, her cologne. That one shirt she's going to wear for the entire season. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just my imagination. So when I go to the meeting with uh, intelligent people who are running this show, I would be able to tell them what my point of view is, what I have uh, yeah. sort of imagined this character would look like. And in one of the uh, meetings, I took uh, a, a cologne, Burberry, and it's, you know, it's pretty square. Yeah. And they said, why this one? I said, because she's pretty square. <laughs> she, she, would, <laughs> she would wear you know, uh, a cologne like this. Whatever, yes. whatever works. Okay, Peter, question for you from the audience. Thorne Tibbetts? Thorn. Thank you, Thorn. Okay, I was wondering about this myself. I'm glad you asked this. Is an override device, such as depicted in the show, possible? Are there actual advisors to the show? I was wondering about that. Is there such a thing? I, I can't tell you if there's an override. I, I, uh, I mean, that's a secret, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> so you're just sitting in the room and go, what if there was a little box? Yeah, what, uh, what if there was a box that could control everything? Yeah. Um, we do have advisors that we go to, absolutely. Um, you know, we like to... Most of the stuff we like to come up with in our heads. Um, and if we need a technical advisor, we usually call somebody in on a specific episode, but we don't have somebody standing by feeding us this stuff. Mm -hmm. Usually it's coming out of our head, and, and uh, if we need specifics, we'll go to somebody on the outside. To make it sound realistic enough. Yeah, sort of. uh, yeah you want it to be real, and you want it to be uh, really resonate, so you really you, you go the extra distance to get the research done. and, and uh, and that's what we do. Okay. An email question from Gabe Sulks in Rochester, Shore. Is Kiefer Sutherland jealous after you've taken the attention as the star of season four? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, he's crying hard all his way to the bank. <laughs> he is such a um, great actor to work with. He is a very hard-working man. Some people ask me, is it hard to work with him? I say, yes, it is hard to work with a hard-working person. He, Raises the bar. He absolutely. literally, absolutely, and he literally carries the whole show on his shoulder. He works all day. He never he's leaves exhausted. the set. Yeah. <laughs> exhausted is, is, is a good word for it. For We've had four days without any sleep, you know. Without any yeah. sleep, absolutely. 16, 15, 16 right. hours of work every day. And I love the way he portrays this action hero yeah. that goes around the world and saves the whole world in 24 hours. <laughs> I know. And nothing ever happens to him. You know, in, in James Bond, usually uh, Sean Connery, yeah. my favorite, usually they were after a big fight. They were done and beautifully. But right. this one, he portrays this character in a very human way. Yeah. And I love the way he portrays this Well, especially this now that he has to get a love interest this season. That, that brings up a whole other element Absolutely. to his character. Absolutely. Which is nice. Okay, Shere, um, an email question from Aaron Olson. Uh, Dina Arez is the scariest character on television. Uh, where do you draw your influences for that character? Beyond the perfume. Beyond the perfume, absolutely. Yeah. It, it has to come from within. Um, there is no such a type. There is no um, model that I can go through magazines and find out. Or a mean there is an, absolutely a mean teacher. No, <laughs> it all has to come from within, and we have to sort of always bear in mind that terrorists are pretty terrorized themselves. Mm. And uh, um, it's, it's, it has to come from within. So, yeah, Just they have a lot of uh, torment inside. Uh, absolutely. Distraught. Allow yourself to deteriorate to that level. Mm. Think of how vicious one can be. Yeah. Uh, you know, regarding all the tortures on the face of the earth. I one, once bought this book from San Francisco, uh, Torture Museum, first torture museum in the United States in San Francisco. Well, that's fun to take the kids to. Oh, <laughs> no, believe me, you don't want to do that. It's <laughs> horrible. I was scared when I came out. I was like this. Oh, my gosh. And I yeah. bought the book, and it uh, shows you all the method of torture. So when you, when you look at them and think that someone actually can work with these machines mm -hmm. and make another one die slowly in front of him, what kind of a terror you are dealing with. Right. Part, so what part of that human Just thinking human about nature. it would, would scare you. And so when you look at your partner, you're scared. <laughs> Especially <laughs> your whole family. The whole yeah. family. Okay, speaking of the whole family, Katie from San Francisco in the audience. I was thinking of this too, Katie. You're right on. How is it working with uh, with Jonathan again after House of Sand and Fog? I'm thinking, did the producers be like, 
Let's see, Middle Eastern mom <laughs> and son. Well, there's the one, the team that's already established. <laughs> or it could be a package deal. You yeah, know? Right. Package yeah, deal. yeah, do you guys work other? as a package deal? <laughs> From now on, this is an inside joke between Jonathan and I, Katie. We keep telling each other that if we have not been stereotyped in any other ways, in this way we have been stereotyped. <laughs> mother and son, son and the mother, the package goes together. It came very natural because we had already worked together in House yeah. of Sand and Fog. And I love Jonathan. He's if wonderful. I had a son, I would have loved, loved him the same. Same way. He's a straight A student. He oh. loves composing and he speaks Farsi and English both very nice. And it's really amazing because kids his age usually do not speak Farsi as well as he does. Right, because he, he wasn't born there, was he? No, he was born here. Yeah. Sida yeah. Sinai. Oh, wow. <laughs> like my kid. daughter. She was born in oh. Sida Sinai. I, well, I'm, I was glad to see him in this because I was so distraught when he died in, in, the, in the movie, in House of Sand and Fog. Oh, so yes. I was like, oh, it's so okay. Yes. Oh, Just imagine uh, what his mom went through. Oh, I told my daddy he couldn't watch it. I knew he would get so upset. No. Nah. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay, Peter, a question for you, uh, email from Cat in Idaho. Oh. Please bring Chloe back. I'm disappointed that she's been written out. I'm having Chloe withdraw. I could have uh, been waiting for Miss Chloe to make an appearance. Oh, uh, we all love Chloe. Uh, don't give up hope. That's all I could say. Well, come on. The Tony move was inspired. Tony was great. I was out of my mind. I was so excited that end part. It was great. It was great. It was shot great. I mean, it was shot great. I mean, we we sort of wrote it that way, but it was just shot brilliantly. Yeah, right? the cliffhanger when he's on the phone and you're like, who could he be? Who? 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 Um, okay, email from Mike in San Diego. Peter, um, well, what happened to Tony and Michelle's characters on the show? So we have, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We'll address it absolutely now that Tony is uh, back in play. It wasn't, absolutely. yeah, that's good. Because, like, we had a, the little uh, chase thing, like what they were, they're off in Valencia having kids or something in the beginning of the mm -hmm. season. We were like, okay, won't be seeing them. <laughs> All right, I'm, I might not be saying this right in the audience. Sivash? Oh, hi. Okay. Um, it's a question for you, Shere. Which do you prefer doing, movies or television? There is no difference between uh, television and, and cinema. Uh, it's just a matter of larger screen, lesser audience, <laughs> smaller screen, uh, larger audience. Gabriel Garcia Marquez joined television 25 years ago in Spain. All the intellectuals and elite were upset with him, saying, oh, Marquez, mediocrity TV. What he said was that when I write a book, 10 million people read it. But when I join TV, I give right. hundreds and hundreds of millions of people to have a chance to become familiar with my work. And Marquez is a great writer of, the, of all. So I, I totally agree with Marquez. There is no difference. Actors should not play for... Um, barriers like uh, now I am in television so I play for TV camera now I, I am in cinema there is no barriers no borders to the acting world I like the way you classed up the joint me mentioning Marquez that's nice, nice <laughs> I love that's Marquez. Good. <laughs> do you perform uh, do you do you do movies in in Europe uh, I used to not anymore no yeah. Okay. Um, an email from Allison in Nashville Shore uh, are you going to be appearing in the film version of reading Lolita in Tehran Absolutely, yes. Reading Lolita in Tehran is written by an Iranian writer, Azar Nafisi, who was educated in the United States. Right after the revolution of Iran, 1979, Islamic Revolution, she went back to Iran to teach Western uh, literature and oh. to be able to help uh, her own people in Iran. She went through a lot of problems and the very first one of all was to, she was expelled from the university, Talagani University, because she was told that they do not want to deal with Western literature and th at that time she was uh, teaching great Gatsby and they said Gatsby is a rotten man who comes back <laughs> to exploit a married woman uh -huh. and she suggests that the best thing is to put the great Gatsby on trial and they huh. do it. And that's why Westerners, this book has been, uh, um, uh, has been selling for almost 50, the best seller in New York Times for the past 52 weeks. And the reason that Westerners l love this book so much is because uh, metaphorically it tells you how Western literature cannot work in the Islamic society. Okay, so culturally it's a, just a culture clash. Absolutely. So that must be a project you're looking forward Absolutely. to. Absolutely. I'm playing Azar Nafisi. We're looking forward to do this at the end of this year. Okay. Once you, once you, the bullet wounds have, have <laughs> yes. <laughs> How was that shooting a, a scene like that? Is it, is it more tense? Is it tense to shoot something it like that? It is indeed, but um, the only key to it is that do not anticipate what's going to happen. Because it's actually, <laughs> Peter can tell you how it works. How does it work, mm -hmm. Peter? You have a squib? The uh -huh. Yeah. How does that go? It's a squib. It's actually a squib. It's sort of like a little explosive packet of uh, of uh, a fake blood. 
and it, it explodes. And explodes on you. At the same time, it explodes on you, and it's like, Pah! and I was like, ah! And I was uh, shouting, and then one of the gentlemen, uh, the uh, crew, came to me and said, "Was it was it you <laughs> in that car with that voice, yeah. that shout? Was it you?" I said, "Yes, I was scared." <laughs> well, since you only, I mean, obviously you don't get this, the season scripts all at one time, right? You get them incrementally one as one. well. So when you saw that she was going to help her son or try to help her son, were you like, "Oh God"? You know, do you have a feeling about where the where the character goes? As a human being who's always been uh, fighting for human rights um, everywhere on the face of the earth, uh, it's you know being on the positive side of the world. Yeah. Obviously, as soon as it came around, I, I felt, oh my God, she's doing something nice here. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. There's something. Can't Absolutely. bring Debbie back, but and then when you watch it, is it fun to get to see the other storylines because you don't know what's going on with everybody else? No, we know. We read it all. Oh, you do. You read yes, it all. Yes. They, they send the screenplay home and we read yeah. it all. No, Peter, were you part of 24 from the very beginning? No, I joined this year, season four. Do you think that they need that for a little, little fresh blood? Um, it's probably good to shake things up a little bit. I'm uh -huh. sure. I, uh, it's, um, you know, this show, this staff, this writing staff of this show is where I look at it like the Yankees. <laughs> you get all these guys that have been on the, on shows, Miami Vice and, and, uh, wise guy and these really incredible shows and, and and they're all showrunners and they're all brought together to create this show so they don't need help absolutely not but uh i got lucky enough to come on the show and and uh, have some input and uh, and write a lot of scripts and, and you had to watch all the seasons beforehand I had to, right? well i watched all the seasons before i was a fan and uh, i know that the creator was a, a good friend of mine and i just happened to sort of go through the process with him the cool. storylines hearing it uh from him over coffee every now and then. <laughs> Those are interesting coffees. Okay, email question from John in Indiana. Shore, do you let your daughter watch on 24? Absolutely. I watched the first two episodes with her and her friends. And all my concern while filming 24 was that if I am a good cook and uh, my <laughs> rice is really good. So That's my, hard to make good rice. It is, it is very hard. It is. And all my uh, daughter's friends, they love my rice. And my only concern was that, God forbid, if they do not come to my house and eat. <laughs> now they're afraid that I might put some poison in their food. <laughs> So, I, that's justifiable. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I watched the first two episodes with them, and I'm so glad I did that because I realized how important this show is to them. And mm -hmm. they actually interact with the show all the time. For example, when Jack Bauer says to his girlfriend, I think I am falling in love with you, all the boys in the room, they said, Oh, Jack, don't fall into a <laughs> trap. No. They, they talk with Jack all the time. Jack should have known better. Jack, don't, don't. All the time. I just think it's a, she's signing a death warrant to go out with Jack Bauer. That's what I'm always worried about with anybody who gets involved with him. But I was like that when you were pushing the uh, Jonathan to the train. I was screaming, get dummy, get to the train. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, baby. Oh. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> what mother says. Okay, Peter, a question from Carol in Vancouver by email. How long does each script take to write, and how far ahead of filming are the scripts written? Good question. Um, how far ahead? Wow, we uh, we usually don't write that far ahead. Um, we are usually a couple scripts ahead, I guess, one or two. Uh, it takes uh, usually takes anywhere from. I mean, sometimes if we're under the gun, we'll write it in a couple days. But you know, luxury. If we had the luxury of the time, we'd like to have about two weeks to write them. Uh -huh. And they're, we're constantly rewriting them. If you look at a, the cover of any script. It goes through a rainbow of colors twice. Oh, yeah. So we're writing, when they're shooting, we're changing things all the time. Uh, and sometimes we'll even go back after we shot the episode and reshoot stuff. So. Well, thank goodness. We can't wait to the next episode, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. I want to thank both of you, Shorea Dashlu and Peter Khan. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I can't get the Canadian man. I get her name right and your name wrong. <laughs> Lincoln, sorry. Thank you so much. Okay, join us again for another episode of 24 Inside. Brought to you by Allstate. And of course, watch 24. See you again.